Okay, finally we have Duncan Gibbs, Managing Director of Gold Road. Duncan has 35 years industry experience, was instrumental in leading the exploration, discovery and development of the 10 million ounce Tropicana gold mine, previously the general manager at Sunrise Dam, which was one of the largest underground gold mines in Australia. Under Duncan's leadership, Gold Road has brought the Gruyere mine into production and driven a consistent lift in grade, throughput and production over the last 12 months. So please welcome Duncan Gibbs, Gold Road Resources. Okay, thank you Digby and uh, obviously we're saving the best to last today. Okay, so Gold Road simply is about creating sustainable value for our shareholders. Uh, of course, we have a long-life, low-cost operation. Our current guidance in attributable ounces, 150 to 170,000 ounces, uh, or 300 to 340,000 ounces on an asset level at Gruyere. We see that growing to 350,000 ounces and holding around that run rate from uh, next year onwards. Uh, we've got in excess of a 10-year mine life. Uh, that's underpinned by a, a large reserve base. Uh, so high confidence in that mine longevity. But we've now got growth options as a result of the DGO gold uh, acquisition that was concluded at the uh, uh, late in June. Uh, amongst that, a very large land position now of in excess of 20,000 square kilometres. We've been producing gold sustainably. Uh, we've had a good run on, uh, on uh, lost time injuries. We've very much got a decarbonisation decarbonization plan that we're working with and very much partnered and aligned with on gold, with Goldfields. Uh, we've got a very strong balance sheet position, 161 million at the uh, end of the last quarter, uh, and strong cash generation through the last quarter as I came to. And of course, that underpins our capacity to pay dividends, which is really quite unique for uh, a company that's really been in production for quite a since short period since the original startup of Gruyere. Uh, if you look at our strategy, uh, we've been using this kind of slide for a while. So Gruyere, very much about uh, turning that into, and going from kind of good to great is really the way I see it. Uh, we're going to run, we've had a good consistent run now with Gruyere. Really it's about trying to maximise the value of that asset, uh, both by uh, enhancing production levels and continuing to grow mine life. Discovery for us is all about trying to find mine too. Uh, and we're very much a company focused on uh, Greenfield's exploration as part of our growth strategy. Of course, we've been quite active in the corporate development space. Uh, no great state secret, I think, that uh, we're an underbidder on Tropicana, uh, active on the Apollo process last year. And uh, as I've indicated, we've successfully concluded the DGO Gold acquisition recently. Uh, very much been improving our ESG performance and uh, the quality of our communication to investors. And we see that as a key underpinning of any successful gold company in the longer term. And of course, putting that all together is really driven by people and your systems, and of course, the balance sheet to be able to drive growth. Now, if we look at uh, the most recent quarter's performance, record is the word. So record uh, uh, milled tonnes, record gold production, increasing in record head grade, uh, that leading to record gold sales, and uh, as I've already indicated, very strong uh, uh, free cash flow, just under 44 million. Uh, building us to that strong $160 million cash balance. Uh, importantly, we've been winding down our hedge book, so that's now sitting at 16,000 ounces. Uh, that will be concluded in November. And of course, at current gold prices, that gives us some strong uplift further uh, in cash flow growth as we move into 2023. Now, just turning to Gruyere, uh, I guess for people who are perhaps less familiar with the, uh, the business, uh, Gold Road, of course, made the discovery of Gruyere uh, back in 2013, I really ran the project through the pre-feasibility, feasibility study, uh, and at the end of that looked at the various financing options and ultimately decided to bring Goldfields in as a partner. Uh, that decision really key to underpinning our strong cash flow uh, position and I think instrumental also in the successful startup of the operation. But really it's a very simple project, it's just big. So large scale open pit, uh, pretty consistent uh, gold grades and inventory over the mine, mine life. Uh, not a lot of complexity around resource modelling, low risk on dilution. It's a large scale, uh, fairly conventional sag and ball in a circuit with gravity, uh, gold recovery. Uh, gold uh, recovery is typically around the 91% level. And uh, of course, you know, we've really the company was founded 
on the strategic land holding that we have at Yamana. Since the project was committed, we've successfully grown reserves by around about a million ounces. Uh, most of that uh, by depth extensions at Gruyere. We've added another couple of pit stages at depth. Uh, we continue to expand the open pit resources. And uh, you know, the, the, the operation is a, in a strong state. Current exploration focus very much on what we call the Golden Highway trend. So along the Attila, Alaric uh, uh, series of all bodies there. And uh, a lot of those pits really go and swallow up the limit of drill holes. Uh, so not a great deal of sophistication in what we're doing. We're simply drilling below and between those pits. And uh, we think there's pretty good potential to build something like another year of uh, mine life out of all of that. And importantly, we need to be doing that work now uh, in advance of sort of some of the longer dated exploration opportunities in the immediate Gruyere area. And that's simply driven by the line, mine plan that moves into mining those satellite ore bodies in the next two to three years. If we look at our performance over recent quarters, uh, we had a few challenges around the middle of last year, but you can see we've been fairly consistently growing ounces, ounce production on a quarter by quarter basis. Of course, that's an important driver of reducing our all-in sustaining cost. Uh, underlying trends there, uh, the uplifting grade, quite important, and uh, we've slowly been building the reliability and consistency of the plant performance and building that towards a 10 million tonne per annum target. A 2022 guidance, uh, 300,000 to 340,000 ounces per year at a low all in sustaining cost of uh, uh, $1,270 to $1,470 an ounce. And we're traveling very much within, uh, within that guidance range. And we've got a high degree of confidence uh, in delivery on, uh, on uh, our performance based on where we are at the moment. So uh, we see the gold production growing to 350,000 ounces a year, really two key factors around that. Uh, ongoing uh, enhancement really around the plant, building up to that 10 million tonne per annum through plate. And then the other key piece is really building the grade up to uh, around about the 1.3 grams. Uh, if you look at this uh, sort of three dimensional long projection of the plant, our first mining stage in pit one, which is now fully depleted, it was really uh, around the, one, point, uh, around the one, 1 1.1 gram per tonne range. We've been moving into sort of mining 1.2 gram per dirt, averaging that out of uh, pit two and the early stages of pit three. But if you look at the future pit stages we've got coming forward, a uh, majority of them are in excess of 1.3 grams per tonne. Uh, so we're confident based on the reconciliations that we're seeing to date that we'll see that uptick in grade. And that's a key factor to underpinning our 350,000 ounce future run rate. Uh, Gold Road, of course, low cost producer. Uh, we're certainly down the bottom end of the curve where you'd like to be. Uh, we don't have copper in the mix to give us a, a bit of a tailwind. And uh, I guess our all in sustaining costs uh, very much has minimum growth capital. And there's not much between our all in sustaining cost and our total uh, sort of corporate costs that are increasingly used by uh, a number of the broken community. Uh, looking at our resources and reserves, so Gruyere, you know, large open pit, 4.2 million ounces sitting in reserves, a total of 6.5 million ounces. These are constrained within quite low cost uh, pit shells, so reserves are reported at $1,750 per ounce, and the open pit resource reported at $2,000 per ounce. Really what we've got at Gruyere, beyond the current open pit mine life, uh, essential to do further future cutbacks, uh, and you know, at a $2,000 per ounce gold price, so that's well below where we're sitting at current gold prices. Uh, but we also believe there's options to look at underground, uh, and the underground drilling you know, extends the ore body to a peak depth around about 1,000 uh, metres. Uh, the resource is currently outlined to 850 metres below surface. Clearly there's potential to keep extending those to depth. And uh, you know, if you kind of do the simple maths based on that 9,000 ounces per vertical metre, you can quickly realise down to a kilometre uh, there's potential to build you know, a really big inventory here. The challenge for us is which is the best way to get the, uh, the economic growth out of that, and what's the right mix of you know, further pit uh, cutbacks uh, and underground mining, and clearly to evaluate either of those, we'll need to do further drilling to get it up into you know, indicated resource category uh, to evaluate the future mining options. Uh, so just moving to corporate development, uh, DGO uh, gold acquisition successfully concluded uh, at the, uh, the end of uh, June. Uh, what does that give us? It gives us a strategic position in uh, degray mining. 
and uh, you know, that opens up opportunities for us to participate in the future development of that asset. Uh, we also hold a 6% uh, interest in Dacian Gold, and as I'm sure you'd all be aware, currently under a takeover uh, proposal from uh, Genesis, uh, so we'll uh, see where that one goes to. Working with uh, Yandel Resources, they've got a large tenement holding up in the Yandel Belt, a uh, very competent team there to, to, breed, to, breed, to, to make further discoveries. And then we've got a large tenement portfolio that I'll come to uh, in a minute. And uh, so we're well positioned to you know, diversify and further build on our growth pipeline. And, and the areas we're looking at are very much aligned to the core competencies of our business. So moving into exploration, uh, looking at a large land package, it's now quite diversified across Australia. Of course, the heart of it is Yamana, and that still will remain our major area of focus. Uh, Gold Road has successfully acquired some tenements up in North East Queensland, and I'll talk to those in a second. And the rest of the land package has really come through the DGO acquisition as recently completed. So just turning to Yamana in brief, uh, you know, really we've been hitting this exploration activities quite hard in the last, uh, you know, really two, two and a half years. Uh, Large-scale air corps programs really getting to the point now where we're successfully mapping out uh, the 3D-dimensional architecture. Uh, there's quite a bit of detail on that in our latest, latest quarterly report and understanding the mineralised corridors, uh, albeit mainly with uh, early-stage air corps drilling, and we're now moving into RC and diamond uh, testing of those targets that, uh, that we've been uncovering. There's still some quite substantial areas here uh, where we've yet to get that first pass sort of air corps drilling um, and a number of quite high quality prospects, including some that we're still negotiating heritage access to. Uh, so, you know, along the way, we've been successful in starting to gather, put together a resource base out at Yamana. That now totals half a million ounces. Clearly, we're not at the point where we can start looking at a second uh, mining development, uh, but that's certainly the strategy that we're trying to build, build towards uh, with further discoveries. And of course we do have the optionality of being able to uh, monetize uh, you know, any of these deposits through, uh, through Gruyere and the, there are clauses within the JV agreement that uh, lets us consider that alternative. If we just turn to Greenvale, so these tenements are still in application stage. Uh, quite interestingly, I think North East Queensland has been somewhat unloved, uh, back from sort of a big phase of exploration that happened in the 1980s and 1990s. Uh, a lot of that was early stage stream set sampling, following up sort of surface prospecting soil sampling. Of course, led to discoveries um, uh, up in that part of the world, so you know, several successful mines, particularly uh, the Normandy operations, of course. Uh, broadly, obtrusion-related gold systems and I guess particularly the sort of diatreme complexes like uh, Kitston and Mount Lation. Uh, you know, where we are here, we've uh, got some ground that was held by basically small prospectors uh, for a long period of time, very little work done, and really quite surprising. There are historical uh, intersections in here that probably quite, don't quite meet sort of all the full jolt code requirements, but we hope to get on the ground, and if we can repeat those intersections, we'd expect to be reporting sort of plus 50 grand metre intersections. Uh, which gives you a pretty strong position to start uh, hopefully turning that into a new resource base. Uh, you know, since the work done in the uh, that, uh, you know, 90s, uh, of course there's a lot of uh, new technology available. We're now able to uh, image off the intrusive centres here through airborne magnetics with some fairly sophisticated processing. Uh, that techniques and uh, the availability and quality of airborne magnetics wasn't available back in the history. And we're certainly able to apply other geophysical tools uh, to better target these uh, mineralised centres. Uh, the other ground block up at Galloway here, similar model, uh, lack of any past exploration, and uh, you know, we're really very much uh, looking for the same sort of targets. Uh, Malina, so this is uh, ground contiguous with the De Grey property holding, a couple of large scale tenements here, uh, and obviously we're looking for you know, hemi type systems. Uh, and if you look at where we are, uh, we're often on, on the uh, western side of uh, that basin. Uh, there are existing known deposits of the intrusion style, such as Tower Rama, and uh, certainly De Grey's reporting some other systems out in uh, their part of the package. Uh, we've just concluded uh, first pass uh, RC, shallow RC program here, and the guys have been out in the ground, and interestingly, we're seeing uh, similar sinucatoid sort of rock types, so the sort of specialised uh, 
uh, magmatic suite up in this part of the world that appears to be the causative uh, component to the mineralized system here. So we're obviously quite excited by the tenements and, and fairly clearly this is a you know, lack of exploration up here, huge opportunities and uh, the success of De Grey has really, of course, changed the perceptions of this part of the Pilbara. Uh, so Panati, uh, large project area that we've got uh, in now South Australia, mix of iron oxide copper gold uh, systems and sedimentary copper. So what do we mean by that? Uh, the iron oxide copper gold, things like Carabatina, uh, Olympic Dam, um, Prominent Hill kind of all fit in that model. Of course, we're looking for giant systems. Uh, we've already out in the ground here, we've got a drill rig uh, testing one of these targets at the moment. Um, and uh, of course, if you can get onto one of these, they really are a game changer. Uh, also, sedimentary copper elements of this, and this has had quite a lot of uh, generative work going on. There's certainly some evidence of this mineralisation process happening in this area. And uh, we think there's some opportunities, and it's certainly worth some further exploration merit. Uh, so we'll be uh, working out to uh, best tap in that uh, that opportunity, and certainly we're in the land of you know, some quite large major players here with the likes of BHP and FMG uh, you know, chasing up these type of systems. And of course, CODA have interest, uh, you know, reported another IOCG system out here in quite recent times. Just turning to ESG, and uh, I guess if people who watched the Goldfields uh, presentation with Chris Griffith this morning, he certainly talked uh, quite extensively uh, to, to what Goldfields is doing in the wider group, and certainly we're fairly closely aligned to uh, what we want to try and do at Gruyere. We've certainly been working hard on this as Gold Road only. Uh, we've done a lot of work around the quality of our communications as well as our underlying performance. Uh, we've been quite successfully recognised now with a number of awards in the ESG space, and uh, we're one of, I think, of only 12 resource companies in Australia that's a member of the Dow Jones Sustainability Index and uh, we'd probably be the smallest company in there by a long shot. Uh, so uh, as Chris talked to this morning, uh, we're in the final stages of commissioning a uh, 13 megawatt uh, solar farm out at uh, Gruyere. Uh, that's coming along and that'll ultimately provide about 10% of the electrical supply out at Gruyere. Uh, we're not going to stop at that point. We're already starting to look at studies to take this up uh, to potentially in excess of 50% renewable generation. Uh, certainly the project that we are concluding stacked up just as a simple business investment decision uh, versus alternatives that we had to expand the gas powerhouse. And we believe with uh, what's likely to be ongoing uh, cost escalation in fossil fuels, uh, if you start putting carbon taxes and other things onto that, that renewables make sense in the longer term. Purely from an economic point of view, as well as, of course, being a critical ingredient to the licence to operate as a mining company in Australia. Okay, so if I can wrap up uh, Gold Road, pretty simply, uh, we're a strong business, we've got strong balance sheet, uh, we've got low, lo low cost operations, greater than 10 year mine life, uh, so we're very, certainly a very uh, robust gold stock uh, within our peer group. We've got growing production out of Gruyere, and uh, plenty of optionality for growth out of our exploration portfolio and our investment portfolio. Uh, we've got the capacity to pay dividends, uh, certainly on the back of that, and with strong growing cash flow, both out of the rising gold production and uh, being a non-hedged producer. Thank you. Thanks very much, Duncan. So we do have time for one or two questions, if there's anything from the floor. Just a simple question, Duncan. Uh, what's your dividend policy? Uh, pay out 20 to 40 per cent of uh, free cash flow. Thank you. Any other questions? OK, we've got one from online um, around mill availability. Um, it was an issue for you last year. Just how confident are you, Duncan, that um, these issues have been resolved going forward? Yeah, so look, we had a few speed bumps with the mill, uh, I guess, second and third quarter last year. Uh, you know, a lot of that related to bearings, uh, particularly on the ball mill. Uh, I guess that being the common kind of theme. You know, we had a few other issues in the plant, but really the issues around the ball mill was the, 
the one that weighed on us relative to our guided performance. Um, really, we've worked through those, so the likelihood is the bearings have had damage either in the transport or historical storage of uh, some of those bearings prior to installation. Uh, we've pretty much replaced all of those through the plant. Uh, you know, once we've got known good bearings, we're confident that uh, the mill will keep uh, performance, keep performing. And uh, you know, certainly now we've had, you know, really three quarters, nine months of pretty consistent, reliable operations without any great surprises. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think that means that we can then stand on our laurels. We've certainly got opportunities to, to turn gr gr you know, Gruyere from a good operation to a great operation. And, uh, you know, we've certainly got a new general manager up there in Carl Stokes who's uh, pretty driven and motivated and I've got every confidence in the management team at Gruyere that they're really going to take the operation to, uh, to the next level. Okay, that's great. Please join me in thanking Duncan Gibbs, Gold Road Resources. <clears throat> that concludes the session for today. Thanks for joining. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Have a good night.